Hi, I'm Chelsea Wilson and I teach AP Language and Composition and Film. And my name is Beth Whitfield and I'm an EAL Specialist and I support the English Language Arts Department grades 10, 11, and 12. And together, Chelsea and I are a team. NCPA encourages the use of students' first language and we leverage the culture as much as possible, not only because we value it, but we also know its benefits in acquiring a second language. The EAL support at NCPA is very unique in that each content area has two English language specialists. These specialists have backgrounds in that content area which allow us to identify specific linguistic demands that are unique to that content area. Immersion has a lot of benefits. The first is that it allows an abundance of L2 input and output. Content area instruction also allows for meaningful and authentic communicative opportunities that are otherwise very difficult to recreate for students. We've adopted the counterbalanced approach, and the counterbalanced approach ensures that both language and content are taught together and that they complement one another instead of one being sacrificed for another. In order for the counterbalanced approach to be implemented successfully, three things must happen. The first is that we must plan the curriculum strategically and intentionally, taking both content and language into consideration. The second is that we have to ensure that all input is comprehensible to students. And third, we have to build students' linguistic abilities with consistent and focused practice opportunities for students. The counterbalanced approach addresses some of the issues that come along with immersion. The first is that, as long as content targets are met, oftentimes the language that students use to communicate the content goes unnoticed and lacks in feedback. We know from second language acquisition theory and research that students must attend to and recognize language forms and we have to provide students feedback on their language in order for them to adequately progress. That means that we have to purposefully and intentionally integrate language into the content areas. To do this, we have to provide students the opportunity to practice, notice forms, receive feedback on their language, and reflect on their language use. So how do we go about the co-planning process? As a co-planning team, we need to look at several things, the first of which is course skills. In AP Language and Composition, one course skill might be that students need to evaluate and incorporate sources into researched arguments. In addition to course skills, we also have course content. In AP Language and Composition, one of our units focuses on science and the environment. Another unit focuses on politics and the economy. When we work together, we need to consider both those course skills and that course content. In addition to skills and content, we also take into consideration all four language domains, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. We also consider university expectations. We draw on our knowledge and our experience as university students, and we look and we think about what were the linguistic demands. In addition to our general knowledge, we also draw on student learning outcomes from intensive English programs at university. These are narrow and focused language elements that the university has identified as being important for student success. Once we've identified course skills, course content, language domains, and university expectations, we work on matching focuses. For instance, in one unit of AP Language and Composition, students may be focused on analyzing writing, examining and identifying the strategies that are being used within texts. We also know from looking at university curriculum that students are expected to be able to analyze the ideas, views, and rhetorical elements presented within texts that they read there. In addition, students need to be able to determine the meaning of new words in context and understand figurative language. We know that in order to do these things, students are going to need to be strong readers. So our language focus for this particular unit was that students needed to be able to transfer their L1, their Chinese language reading skills, to their L2, English. Our students are strong readers in Chinese, and they have skills that when transferred can help them be more successful in their English reading ability. With practice, identifying the main ideas, and deciphering word meaning, students are going to be able to comprehend higher level texts in English. In our narrative nonfiction unit, 
the content skills that students need to be able to analyze multimedia, explaining and identifying the author's use of rhetorical strategies. We also know from looking at university expectations that students need to be able to comprehend authentic listening texts. They need to be able to summarize, paraphrase, infer, and identify strategies that people are using when they're listening. We know that in order to be successful at this, students need to be strong listeners in English. Our language focus was that students need to be able to recognize auditory cues to identify main ideas when listening. So what does this look like in the classroom? Chelsea gives me consistent days in the calendar to come in and provide students language instruction. Each of these language lessons are extremely focused and narrow and aim to provide students the opportunity to practice, notice forms, receive feedback on their language, and reflect on their language use. So how do students benefit from the use of this counterbalanced approach at NCPI? Well, firstly, using the counterbalanced approach encourages students to be metacognitive. We know from educational research that metacognition is one of the best ways to improve student learning. Additionally, the counterbalanced approach allows for the use of scaffolding. It helps us provide tools and structures so that students can access content and be successful on learning outcomes. Finally, the use of the counterbalanced approach allows for access of course material. When students are given challenging written or auditory texts in their classes, they need to be able to access them to be successful. This model allows for that to happen. In our first unit of the year, the language goal was that with practice, the noticing of forms, feedback and reflection, students would be able to apply their Chinese reading strategies to their English reading in order to increase their effectiveness. The content goal was that students would be able to analyze and interpret samples of purposeful writing, identifying and explaining the author's use of rhetorical strategies. We asked students to annotate the reading strategies that they used in both Mandarin Chinese and English. We found that 85% of students could do this successfully in their first language Chinese. However, only 42% of students could articulate the reading strategies that they use in English. After four lessons, 90% of students had met the language target of being able to transfer reading strategies that they were able to use in their first language to their second language. Students' success in this language domain allowed them to be successful in the content. When comparing students' AP multiple choice scores from the beginning of a nine-week unit to the end, we saw that students' average exam score rose 20%. In our second unit of the year, the language goal was that with practice, the noticing of forms, feedback, and reflection, students would be able to apply accurate intonation patterns, effective pausing, and pronunciation of difficult phonemes to their oral output. Our content focuses were that students would be able to create and sustain original arguments based on information synthesized from readings, research, and personal experience. In addition, students needed to be able to present information, findings, and supporting evidence clearly, concisely, and logically. After four language lessons, there was clear and noticeable improvement in the vast majority of students' ability to accurately implement English intonation patterns, pausing, and the production of difficult phonemes. You'll listen to a student's oral output before instruction and after instruction. Here's the student's output before instruction. From a personal perspective, I believe that, that disobedience uh, is very valuable for our social uh, societies because it seems to be a tendency for uh, people to be being the dis, dis, be, disobedience because uh, we are the humans. Now you'll listen to the student's oral output after instruction. Pay close attention to their accurate use of intonation, a reduction of unnecessary pauses, and the clarity of their phonemic output. Today, I'm going to talk about creativity. Different, different people have significantly different with these projects. As for me, I believe creativity is one of the most essential characteristics that people need 
to have in the modern society. How did students' improvement in language improve their ability to be successful in content? If we look at students' ability to create argument and present information over the course of the unit, we see that in nine weeks, the proportion of proficient students rose from 16% to 75% on those particular skills. You've been able to learn about what language support looks like at NCPA. At NCPA, we draw on both university expectations and data collected from external assessments in order to inform the language instruction provided to students in the classroom. Our example illustrates both the value and the benefits to an NCPA education.